Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. I'm going to take the first four verses or five. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard a voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts, and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. So if we remember when we were in chapter 7 and 12, you, remember, you all remember when we did about the 444,000, yes. 144,000. Yes. And when we did that, we remember that they, they had the seal of God on, on their lives. And we have established that the 144,000, it is Jews. Jews that who preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and as they preached the gospel of Jesus Christ the word of God say as we read it clearly uh, they were redeemed from where from the earth as we just read we just read and also what we saw as well is that the word of God in verse 1 and looked and he John said he said and I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters. The lamb that the word of God is speaking about here in verse 1, it is clearly the lamb who is Jesus Christ. And if we remember, when we read in Revelation chapter 5, when the word of God said, when John said, he looked, and he, listen, he, he didn't find anyone that was able to open the book of life. But the lamb, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb of God. And we saw who that was, that was Jesus Christ. So we know that person, that the lamb that the word of God is speaking about right here, or who John saw was Jesus Christ. And again, verse 2, and I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. They're worshiping right here. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. So they are singing a song here. They are, they are giving God praise. They are, they are worshiping God. John said it, it sounds as, as a new song. And only the 144,000 is as if only they could have learned this song. I don't know why. I don't know how it's just only the 144,000. The word of God went on to see. It says... These are they which were not defiled with women. Who is they? The 144,000. 
they will not defile women. So we see that the 144,000, even when we, we, we did uh, uh, on that earlier on, that they were just virgin men. It is nobody else but those Jews, and the word of God went on to speak and it says, for they were virgins, as we saw, these are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first, first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. The spy said, And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. We move on to verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. So here it is at this point in time now, listen, even in the midst of everything that is about to take place on the earth, we have this angel He's flying in the midst of heaven, decreeing the gospel, the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. You all see how, how merciful God is? So, again, in the midst of all what is taking place, God is still sending a message of hope, and He's telling the people. As the angel here is preaching, I saw another angel, but which John saw, fly where? In the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. So brothers and sisters, imagine this. You are seeing an angel in the air. The word of God said, and he is preaching. Listen, this ain't no satellite here, you know. The angel is in the air, and the word of God is being pronounced. It is, it is decreed, it is declared, the everlasting good news. Now that is awesome. As reading this, it reminds me of Sodom and Gomorrah. Before God would have uh, destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, what he did? He sent two angels. You all remember? Yeah. So we see, we are seeing that angel, listen, is always on assignment to carry out the will and purpose of God. You would have wanted to say, and they, again, the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. Everyone. It doesn't matter whether you are you're an Indian, whether you are Caucasian, uh, whoever, the will of God is being preached. That's verse 5, that's verse 6. And verse 7 says, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Verse 7 says, Listen, this angel, he's saying, Listen, fear God. This is not a fear of giving somebody just respect, you know. The word for that is a word called phobio. That's a Greek word for it. And we know that so much. We have a word, phobia. So, so somebody will say, all right, arachna, phobia. which means fearful of spiders. So, this angel is telling the people, and that phobia, or phobia means to be frightened, to be, to be alarmed, to be in awe, revered, to be afraid. I remember when I was young, and there were blue devil in Pyramid, and I read, listen, my aunt, she was afraid of blue devils. So on Carnival Monday morning, she would have stayed home. And for some reason, this, uh, this, uh, on this Carnival Monday morning, she had to go somewhere. And while in Parman, she heard Sister Joan, you, you will know that so, so well, 
That, that, that's my Aunt Mary. And when she heard the devil, the, the, the biscuit pan knock, she hold or she held my hand and begin to run. So imagine this big woman, she's afraid of the devil and she's running at full pace, full pace, sorry. And I'm trying to catch up and she's pulling me, you know. And that in itself, listen, and you could have seen the terror on her face. Because she, listen, when you're talking about blue devil, there's nothing nice about that. Even though it's, it's a traditional thing in Paramin, but there's nothing good about that. Because the, 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 the mask that they would have on and so on. So listen, so she was afraid and you could have seen the, the, the anguish on her face. And her mouth, you know, while she's running and you see the anguish, her mouth just opens like, you know? She, she's in this place of always like, oh gosh. So this angel is telling the people of the earth here, yeah, listen, be the fear God and give glory to him. So he's telling the people, listen, fear God and worship him. I wonder if people, if they will be listening. Because you're hearing this sound in heaven. The word of God spoke about in the book of Matthew when Jesus, when he, when he was on the mountain and Moses and Elijah, they came and they spoke with him. And the word of God said, and a voice came and said, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. They just heard the voice. And Peter and John said, listen, let us build a tabernacle. They were telling Jesus that. And the voice from heaven came and spoke and they heard it. I don't know at that point in time how it is, but I know the nations of the earth, they will be hearing this audible voice speaking and decreeing and, de and giving that declaration to fear God. Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. This is another warning, you know, on the earth. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountain of uh, and the fountains of waters. Look at verse 8. And there followed another angel. So as soon as this angel was finished doing his thing, another angel followed immediately. Followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Is fallen that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. When you think about Babylon, you know when, when, when people think about when you hear uh, Rastafarians when they speak and they say, "Listen, up, look at Babylon." You ever you ever see men watching? They watching the police and they call the police Babylon. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, that's foolishness. The police at Babylon is the whole system. That is what Babylon is. The whole worldly system. The way how things are run. Because remember, with this system, this, this, this system, it, it is designed to follow after Satan. You know? Remember the Antichrist have come, the Antichrist is just having his way, miracles are being done. The false prophet is flowing, we read it in chapter 13. So the whole Antichrist system, listen, I, I, I want to draw your attention closely to something, to show. You all remember reading about... Um, Nimrod. So we would have read about Nimrod in Genesis chapter 10 and 11. And what Nimrod did, if you all remember, he built what? The Tower of Babel. Is that so, right? Yes. Right. So he built the Tower of Babel and everybody was under one. Listen carefully. You know right now there's a Tower of Babel, whether we like it or not. And here's the Tower of Babel. 
is under this. You and United Nations. Listen, you, 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 you're going to see. Because I thank God for opening up. Hear what the word of God say. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Is fallen. That great city. Because she made all nations drink of the wine of wrath. Listen, I was so, I wanted to make sure and write it down carefully. So Babylon is it's a worldly system. It's a political system. It's just as how the UN is being run. It's just as how WHO is run. It's just how, uh, as how uh, the World Economic Forum. Now, when you hear the words such as the nation, because she made all the nations drink of her wine, Listen, it's when you have a woman and a woman have a child, what she does? She feeds. She feeds that child. So everybody is under this system and this system, which is a worldly system, Everyone is being fed out of the system. And this is a system that will fall. So, um, listen, I'm going to bring it up. I wanted to read over the thing that we read the other day. That's concerning uh, who? No, the 195 nations or 96 nations of the earth, they are under the United Nations and under who? Right? And because as we are aware, when COVID came, whatever WHO said, what we had to do as a country, we what? We followed what they say. So whenever you would have heard the Minister of Edu um, sorry, of uh, Health spoke, and when you would have heard the uh, CMO, when he spoke, they would have gone according to who? What who said? You all understand? Right. So when who said something, because they, there was a treaty that this country would have signed together with who, whatever they spoke, Listen, we as a country, we have to flow. Or the, the government that is under that, they have to flow under what is being said. You all understand that, right? Right. So because of that now, we are under that now. Whatever is being passed within the world, children and Tobago have to go with it as well. Because we are under the umbrella of who? We are under the umbrella of the United Nations. And because we are under that system, that uh, Babylon or Babylonian system, whatever they say, this has to flow. And out of this coming something called the World Economic Forum. And what they will introduce, listen, they will introduce everything when it comes to finances, everything will be under a one world order. So that's how everything will flow now. And, we, and the word of God spoke about Babylon and she fed. She, listen, she caused, let me, let, let me read it good. Saying Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made, she made. So for you to make uh, something happen, which means that there have to be laws. They have to be, uh, because you are under that umbrella, whatever we say you will have to do. So she made all nations drink of the wine of, of the wrath of her fornication. Made all nations drink means, um, I want to make sure and give it to you all. It means potizo, which means to give or to make drink. To feed. Again, whatever we say, you will have to comply. And that's how things is flowing right now. 
whatever we are under that umbrella so whatever they say we have to flow so this country the Caribbean the, the nations of the of the Caribbean let me tell you something everything is right everything is ready for the Antichrist because we are flowing in that order we flow in straight in it so it, 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 it is clear for us to see that there's no doubt that we are in the last days it is clear for us to see that everything is on point. So, uh, she drank of the, the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Uh, the wrath, listen, the word for that means, that wrath means thumos. And what it really means, it means a strong desire or passion. So when we think that the wrath, it means something that is fierce, what that wrath really means is like having a strong, a passionate, so, and, you know, wrath of a fornication, whatever it is, adultery, incest, what, listen, the word fornication right there, it comes from the word porneo, and what porneo means, what, what, when you think about that, what, what, what's the first thing that comes to our mind? pornography so whatever it is the world will be engulfed in that strong it's happening let's move along and they followed another angel as in verse 8 and verse 9 now after and the third angel followed them which was the two angels before saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God so listen so whoever it is will take the mark of the beast and so on and who will drink of that system well all right then you drink of that of their wrath well then you're gonna drink of the the wrath of the Lord now So that's why they say the same, in other words, the same person. Whoever it is have done that, they're going to feel the wrath here. So let's read. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of, of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb listen i didn't stop there and the smoke of their torment ascended wow forever and ever and they have no rest day or night who said that hell is a real And the smoke of their torment go up when? For two years. For two years. Forever. Day. Listen, what is so? And ever. And they have what? No rest. Day, no night. Who worship the beast and his image, and whoever received the mark of his name? Are we seeing any loophole whereby people will be free? Are we seeing any loophole whereby persons they will um they will be in hell for a short time, and then God will say, "Okay, I'm going to have mercy upon you. Uh, you have spent 50 years, 70 years, or you have just worshipped the Lamb. So just for a short while, for a little season, you're going to get a little feel a little burner, and then you're going to be redeemed. Oh no, forever and forever and ever. <laughs> Yesterday, while um, when I was finished, uh, I, I did some laundry and I had to come down here, run down here in the evening time and so on. 
So just, so just set some up and down. And when I reach home, just do some things and so on. And by at a certain time, when I eat dinner, you, you should have seen me. Now, I have, to, I have to take a little time to make sure that my stomach can digest the food properly and so on if I go and lie down. And at a certain time, uh, if you should see me. What well, how we call it in general? We duck it. Sleeping. Listen, I'm falling asleep. I'm tired. But in this place here, you're being tormented. There's nothing good about the word called tom uh, tormented. And you have no rest. You're tired, but you can't rest. And when you think you can't take it, you have to take it. Anybody ever feel tired and say, listen, I, I can't make, I can't make. And, you, and listen, as you rest your head, you get your bone clear. You're tired and you cannot sleep because you are tormented. Day nor night, who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. There's no coming back. There's no redemption. There's no freedom once you take that mark. Whoever it is. Verse 12, just swing, it's different. Verse 12 said, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. When you go to God speak about patience, you speak about endurance. It speaks about waiting. I want to encourage us tonight as we reach in this, listen, let us keep our eyes open. Let us wait with patience. Sometimes, listen, life can be frustrating sometimes. Isn't it? Isn't it so? Yes. Am I the only one that feels frustrated? No, I'm not. We all do. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Listen, you are hearing that? Listen, I mean, reading this, this is, this is very solid, boy. Let's read it again. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yeah, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. <laughs> so at that point in time, let me tell you something, judgment coming in. And from that point in time, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. So in other words, you die in Christ, you know what? You're safe. You're good. You're secure. And all the good things that you do because of your works, listen, it will follow you. Because as you do those, you, you do good things, you do it as unto who? The Lord. Things begin to heat up right now. Verse 14. And I looked and behold a white cloud. And upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man. having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. I want to continue reading. And another, and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap for the time is come for thee to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire. And cried with a loud, a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle saying, Thrust in thy sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth. For her grapes are fully ripe. Listen to what, anybody know what's a sickle? Yeah. Right. 
você se conhece essa voz? Right, the, a ribbon instrument. Right. So, Brother Stephen, do you have your brass knife? A brass knife. You don't have it anymore. But you remember you had a grass knife before? Two. Two, right. You all know what's a grass knife? Right. So a grass knife would have what would have been used, so what farmers would have used a long time ago. There are a few people who still have it. That's what you would have cut your grass with, and you would have got to, to, to feed your donkey or your, uh, your, your cattle or your goat or your sheep. So they had a grass knife a long time. So in Parma, that's what I know as a grass knife. But the, the international term for it is a, a sickle. And when you think about a sickle, you talk about, the word I was speaking here about uh, somebody who come and read. And when I read this, you all have heard Sister Swan or watching the Grim Reaper? <laughs> Anybody, you, you hear the terms of Sarah Sammy, Sister Deborah? Yeah. The Grim Reaper? And when you think about the Grim Re Reaper, Sister Joseph, you think about this man, he's in a hood. He has this long reaper or sickle in his hand. And when you see the Grim Reaper, nobody don't want to uh, be on the street. Because you know that when, the, when you see the Grim Reaper, that means death. Sorry for the world to say, at this point in time, this is not the Grim, the Grim Reaper. This is the Holy Reaper. Because he's going to reap. He's going to bring judgment upon the earth. I would love to, to term this part of the of Revelation chapter 14, the Holy Reaper. Because that's what it is. Jesus Christ, he did speak in uh, Matthew chapter 13. I want you to please go there with me quickly. Matthew chapter 13. Because we read here about the angel and about the Son of Man. I think I'm going just a little bit before. But that's okay. Everything will be tied in smoothly, I'm sure. Matthew chapter 13. And you know what the word of God says right here? Jesus Christ was talking about the wheat and the tears. And this is what he said. And I, I, I pick it up from verse 28. And he said, so from verse 27. So the servants of the house called her, came and said unto him, Sir, this not, this is not, not thou so good seed in thy field, from whence then hath it tears. He said unto them, An enemy hath, hath done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, No, or nay. Lest while ye gather up the tears, ye root also up the wheat, also the wheat with them. Let both grow until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the who? Reapers. Gather ye together first the tears and bind them in bundle to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus given an explanation again in verse 37 of Matthew, Matthew chapter 13. He said, He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tears are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers is who? Any word of God to uh, uh, speak about the Son of Man on the cloud, and an angel came what? An angel came with a sickle in his hand also. So we are seeing clearly that this is the time, is the time of reaping, it is the time of judgment. 
Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew chapter 25, it speaks about the goat and the sheep. And the angels will come and what? Separate. So this is the time right here in Revelation chapter 14. And verse, I, 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 I want to read, I'm, I'm going to take it from verse 14 again. And it says, and I looked and behold a white cloud. And upon the cloud one sat like unto the son of man, having on his head, head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. In the book of Daniel chapter 7, I want to go there, of course. Pastor, go there. Daniel chapter 7 verse 13. Because Daniel gave uh, the same, what, something that Daniel saw is the same thing that John see right here. And this is what the word of God said right here. Then answered they, Revelation chapter, um, Daniel chapter 7 verse 13, and it says, and I saw in the night visions, and behold, and one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him there before him, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. What Daniel saw, the same thing what John saw. The son of man on the clouds. Let's look one more. Matthew chapter 24, let's go. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30. And it reads, Jesus speaking, speak he said, from verse 29, that's when he's coming. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man where? in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming where in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory the same thing jesus spoke it in the mouth of one or of two or three witness, witnesses god's word is established the word of God also said right here in the book of Acts chapter 1, Jesus Christ, he was taken up in what? Clouds! And the angel said unto the people, just as how you see him leave, he will come in the same way, in the clouds! And he's right here again. He's coming. He has reached. He's in the clouds. Like unto the Son of Man having his head, uh, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. Verse 15, and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped. And another angel, verse 17 says, came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire. You're hearing that? And cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle seen. Thrust in the sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. You all see these two things? First, it speaks about the earth and the harvest is ripe. This one right here is saying, it's speaking about the grapes are fully 
right. And what it means is that you, oh, you all know when something fully right, Brother Stephen, Brother Victor? You know, you ever have a, a, a mango starch? And when you have a mango starch, it right. But you know what some people like to do with their mangoes? They like to put it on. Still. Where it's starting to get spots. And sometimes when the mango it's still too long, it's starting to get rotten. And that is what's happening right here. It's two different things. It's like different judgments. One is with grapes. And one is just ripe. But this one, it's fully ripe. So things in a rotten state. So the people of the world, the angels came to bring hope, but they still didn't take heed. And not taking heed to all that was said and done, God began to thrust his sickle and begin to, to, to bring judgment upon the earth. And what the word of God say right here, listen, and another angel came out, that's verse 18, of the altar which had power over fire and cried with a loud Listen, when you think about that judgment, it brings you back to Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels told, to, to told Lot, Lot, get out and go onto the mountains because it rained fire and brimstone. So listen, this is me here. I'm thinking to myself, listen, I wonder if that's the angel who was in Sodom and Gomorrah. I am just saying, because it's fire and brimstone that came down in Sodom and Gomorrah. And you can read that account in Genesis chapter 19. Let's go on. Verse 19, and the angels and the angel thrust in his sickle in, into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city. And blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. This is a few hundred miles, a couple hundred miles. What is so devastating right here is that Joel, in the book of Joel chapter three, spoke about this coming. This will be the last scripture for the evening that we will go to. Please go with me to Joel chapter 3, please. We take it from verse 10. Beat your plowshare into a sword. And your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about thither. Cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen, the heathen be waiting and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round, round about. Put ye the sickle. Oh, yes. For the harvest is ripe. Come get ye down, for the press is full, the vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars, the stars shall be draw their shining. When God cast his sickle upon the earth, when he cast the judgment, when the holy reaper, 
when he come and he execute judgment on, on that which is unholy, there's none that could stand or abide. There's none. And God is about to pour his anger, his wrath upon the earth in these times here. I will just close by saying this one thing. They that have an ear, let him hear. The Spirit of the Lord is seen. God is a God of mercy. He always, for some reason, seeks to make a way to deliver men. You know, the word of God said, the Lord wishes that none would perish, but that all will come to everlasting life. We serve a merciful God. We also serve a God that is great, terrible. I urge us to continue fighting the good fight of faith. In Jesus' mighty name. We are the bride of Jesus. For when God is coming for our church, he's coming for our church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. First Peter chapter 1 verse 16 says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. This is not a time to get ready, but to be ready. Maranatha, the Lord is coming. God is real. We thank you today. Father, we thank you today, Lord God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit being with us and guiding us through your word, Father. We don't want the word to depart from us. We don't want it to be stolen, Father God. But we want it to be kept. Lord, in everything that we have, Father, in us, things that are not of you, we ask you to help us, Father, in the name of Jesus. We want to be, Father God, a vessel, tried and truth. We want to be a holy vessel. We want you, Father God, to be pleased with us, Father. We want that when you look upon us, you said, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter, in whom I am well pleased. Thank you, Lord, Father. Continue to guide us in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. God is real. Amen. God is real. Come and give him a clap off in this evening, of course. It's good.